Hey there, welcome back to Flat Tire Farm. Today we're gonna make marinated roasted red peppers and get them canned up. We're out in the garden because, well, we need to get some herbs for this recipe. Here's part of our little herb garden. You can see my mountains of cilantro. We'll get to that another day. But over here, I've got some oregano and I've already gotten some of it down. But all I'm gonna do is just snip the little pieces up and put it in our basket. All right, Look, here's the greenhouse. We have plenty of green tomatoes <laughs> and kind of robbed the basil yesterday, but we will get some more today. Okay, we're back inside now. We'll deal with these herbs in a little bit, um, but let's get the hardest part out of the way first, which is dealing with the red peppers. Now for this recipe, we're going to need four pounds of red peppers. We're going to cut the tops off, take all the seeds out, put them in the pig bucket if you have pigs, put them in the chicken bucket if you have chickens. Um, and then we are going to blister the outsides and then peel them. And that, the peeling takes forever and a day, but that's okay, we're gonna get it done. This is um, some red peppers from a case of organic red peppers that I got in bulk on Azure Standard. So it's kind of been all peppers all the time for the last two days. I find that in some cases I can get organic produce in bulk from Azure Standard cheaper than I can get um, non-organic produce here. Might just be because of where I live. Things are so expensive in Alaska. Um, or it could just be because that's just a really great deal. So I encourage you to, to check that out and do some price checking and see if you can save some money and get some higher quality produce. Um, I'll leave a link in the description below um, to head over to the Azure Standard website if you wanna check that out. Okay, I'm gonna keep cutting the tops off of these, getting the yuck parts in the pig bucket. I'll cut them in half because we don't want them too small just yet. Um, and then I'll meet you at the stove so that we can blister these, um, the skins, so that we can get them peeled. See you back in a second. Okay, here we are at the stove. I want to show you how I blister these peppers to get um, the skins off. Okay, I hope this angle is good for you for viewing. We just need peppers, a uh, gas top stove, and some tongs. We're gonna turn the stove on. We just stick the peppers right on there. They're gonna start popping and that's okay. It's not too scary. We just wait a little bit, see if I can get you to hear it popping. Oh, there it was. Okay, and we just want to get the outside to soften and blister. That one's a little bit black on that side, so I'm gonna turn it not ready yet. You're not trying to cook it. You're just trying to get the skin to blister most of the way like that. You can see it's dark right there and light right here and then black. That light part is all where it has started to cook a little bit and pulled away from the uh, vegetable. So we'll cook that one a little bit more. That one's done. I'm just going to throw them in a big bowl to cool. When I get all these all done, I'll meet you back at the table and then we'll get peeling. Okay, here's all of our peppers that we got blistered. They're still warm. So I'm gonna throw these wet paper towels over the top just because the heat and the moisture is gonna help me peel it um, in a little bit. And I'll use those paper towels to help me peel also. So this is the tedious portion of our job. So you can scrape the black stuff off that gets most of the skin off see if I can find you one that's pretty blistered. So when it gets blistered, the skin separates from the flesh and you're supposed to be able to peel it off. However, it's not that easy and it's a huge pain. Um, but I do my best to get at least some of it off. Like I said, you can use the knife, that works. Or you can use a wet paper towel or damp cloth and rub it off and that works too. It just makes a big mess. So however you wanna get them off, you do it. I don't worry about getting them all off either, by the way, cause I don't have time for that. 
and it seems to work out just fine. And a little bit of black left on it makes it real pretty. Okay, I did decide to go ahead and do some green ones too, just because I bought a case of green peppers also. I saved $87 on this case of green peppers by buying it from Azure Standard, just uh, in case you wondered. And I'll show you how this skin peels off. Just kind of rub it off. Nothing exciting. All right, I did find a good example of how this skin just separates. You can see just separates from the flesh. Okay, we got the hard part done now. Now the easy part. I'm gonna cut these and chop them up into pieces depending on how I'm gonna use this. Now, you might put it in slices um, if that's how you wanted to use it, but I'm gonna use it in things like um, pasta salad and pasta sauces. And probably Mr. Reeves gonna just eat it out of the jar and that's fine too. So I'm chopping it in, I don't know, one inch squares. If you want to think about it like that. I'm also going to um, open these up and use the immersion blender and have it as a salad dressing starter, which I'm really excited about. But I'll get all these chopped up. And I'll see you back in a little bit. Okay, we got all of our peppers chopped up. You can see they've got little black chard bits on it. Looks kind of pretty in there actually. Okay, so now we're going to make the marinade and mix it right in the bowl and then put it straight into the jars rather than doing a separate brine situation. Um, we need a cup of lemon juice. I bought a case of organic lemons from Azure Standard too. This is just a little sink strainer actually that I can sit in the top of jars. I have one for teeny tiny jars and all the way up to um, wide mouth jars. I think I just got them for a couple of bucks. I'll leave a link in the description below if you're interested in it. Okay, we got our cup of lemon juice. Dump all the stuff and seeds and pulp to the pigs. We'll put our cup of lemon juice in there. We're going to need about two teaspoons of salt. Um, now you're going to want to use non-iodized salt um, like um, canning and pickling salt, or you can buy this plain salt for super dirt cheap um, at Walmart. It's also non-iodized. Um, but I'm using um, the Redmond Livestock salt that I ground down and added lemon zest to because that's just what I like to cook with. And I will take the chance of whether there's iodine in here or not. I don't think there is. Um, and also we're not gonna pressure can this, we're just gonna water bath it. So it's not really gonna affect much. I usually use non-iodized salt when canning because you don't want the iodine to make your fruit and vegetables and such turn brown and ugly, but I'm not worried about it. Okay, we also need two cups of vinegar. And here's the kicker guys. A cup of olive oil. I know, we're going to can with a cup of olive oil in there. Now, I did this recipe as a practice before because I was like, I don't know about putting olive oil in there. Sometimes I'll sneak a tablespoon or so into things, um, but never like a whole cup. But it seemed to work. It sealed fine. And I think it's because we're not pressure canning this. We're just water bathing. Um, and so maybe because we're not pressure canning, it doesn't pull the oil up to the top of the jar, um, which usually is the problem because that interrupts the seal. But mm, seemed to work and I'm happy if I can add oil to stuff. That's fabulous. And other than just a couple variations, of things I've added or taken out, um, things that don't affect the acidity level, this is an approved canning method. There's two cups of white vinegar and one cup of um, lemon juice, which are highly acidic. Um, and so that's what must make this safe um, for canning. So I'm happy about that. I'm gonna take about six cloves of garlic. By the time we get garlic here in Alaska, it's usually pretty rubbery. So I just have to twist the clove back and forth and that breaks the paper open. I don't have to do anything uh, magical other than that. If it doesn't twist right away, I can always just smash it with the knife and pull it apart that way, but this seems to work pretty quick for me. <laughs> All right, now to get that obnoxious little paper off of me. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. So now I'm 
I'm just going to chop this up. I don't want to make it teeny tiny pieces. Just maybe it's a large mince. I don't know. Just chop it up. <laughs> Try not to get any of these stupid papers in there. All right, we're going to throw that in there. And now we just need the herbs that we picked. Okay, I wanna show you a really neat way that I learned how to um, get all the oregano leaves off. You take a strainer, stick the top end through one of the holes, maybe if I can make it happen. Then you just pull it backwards and all of the leaves stay in there and the stem comes out. You gotta pull it backwards. It doesn't work if you pull it forwards. You can use this method for doing time also. To make this cool little tool that I saw um, from Jessica from Three River Rivers Homestead. And it's essentially, it's a tiny little hand tool that's got different size holes in it. You can just pull your stuff through. She was using it to pull kale through, which I did the other day because I thought that was pretty cool. Let's see, how much oregano am I gonna put in here? Maybe half a cup loose. All right, now for the basil. I'm sure I picked more than I need, but it's probably gonna be about a cup all squished down and chopped. So I just kind of mash it all together, and make strips out of it, like eighth inch strips if you can. Try not to chop your fingers off, that's always important. Maybe go this way a little bit, but I really want the chunks of it. Yeah, if I squished it all down, it's definitely a cup. Okay, so let me get this cleaned up and then we'll get to the next step. Okay, I think we got things to somewhere manageable now and our big pigsty is cleaned up. So we're just gonna mix this up. And we're gonna put it in half pint jars. When I did this last time, I ended up with not enough liquid. So I just had, I kept adding more liquid and that was fine. You just need to make sure that you, it's, it's three to one, the acidic base, either lemon juice or um, white vinegar to one, the olive oil. And as long as you keep that ratio, um, then you'll still be canning a safe product. Okay, we got our jar and our jar funnel. We're gonna do half pint jars today. We're gonna put the peppers in there and cram it down. Okay, I think we got it down pretty good now. And then we're gonna put the liquid in until we get to a half inch of head space. Now, a half inch of head space is just half of the way down between the rim of the jar and this a glass ring that goes all the way around because this whole distance is about an inch. All right, and I got too many peppers in there. So let's even that out. It looks pretty good. Looks like half inch of head space enough for me. We're gonna take our white vinegar. We're gonna put on a clean paper towel. We're gonna wipe the rim of this jar off because we probably have a metric junk ton of oil on here and we don't want any of that oil on that rim because that's gonna interrupt our seal and it won't be shelf stable and then that will like completely defeat the whole canning process. All right, so that's clean. We're gonna take our lid with the rubber side down. We're gonna put it on the rim of the jar. We're gonna put the ring on, finger tight, which means you just spin it till it just catches. And then you're gonna turn the ring an eighth of a circumference of the jar or an eighth of a turn, and that's finger tight. I'll get all these jars fill up and I'll show you how much we came up with. Okay, looks like we got 11 half pints. That's pretty good. I did have to add a little bit more brine about an additional cup's worth. I'll make sure that I adjust that in the ingredients um, in the description below. 
I have the water bath canner already full of water and heating up because I want to put the jars in this water bath canner when it's at a rolling boil. Sometimes I'll wait and let everything come up to temperature on its own um, with the jars in a cold water bath canner, but I'm not gonna do that today because I don't want these peppers to turn to mush and goo. So we are going to get this to a rolling boil, then I'll put the jars in there. I'll see you in just a sec. Okay, we're at a rolling boil. We'll get all these little jars in here. And we're gonna water bath for 15 minutes. I'll see you back when we're done. We'll see how we did. Okay, time's up. We'll turn this off. Let's take the lid off, but let me get my gloves first. All right. See how we did. Looks pretty good to me. Remember, I'm gonna leave the recipe in the description below. I'll leave links to any of the equipment that we use today that you might be interested in. Also, I will leave a link to Azure Standard if you're interested in checking to see if you can save money on getting organic stuff cheaper than the regular old stuff at the grocery store. As always, thanks for joining us on Flat Tire Farm. Stay tuned for more videos because I still have a half a case of red peppers and a half a case of bell peppers to deal with. Uh, so there'll be more to come for sure. You guys stay warm out there.